if you remove, will change. Your state of mind and being will change. Your quality of life, you'll sleep better. You will live better. You will be better. Amen? Turn to the person next to you and say, I cannot wait to hear this word. Now the word, there's two words for the word here in Greek. And the one just means I can hear you, which a lot of husbands are good at this. We hear what the wife is saying, but we're not listening. There's two different ways. You can hear or you can be listening. When you're listening, means you're no, hold on, hold on. You know, you heard her, but you weren't listening. <laughs> and a lot of times we get like that with God. And so this morning, we want to be listeners. Uh, the Greek word akus, are you listening? Are you listening to me? As the Bishop Henry says. Uh, um, and so we want to be those that listen, that are listening to what the Spirit of God is saying. So last week, we talked about the highest form of faith. How many of you remember that? And the highest form of faith is that which rests in God. When God says it, your faith is in a place of rest. A lot of people misinterpret that, and, uh, uh, and they think that resting is actually uh, um, is you uh, uh, not doing anything, is, is, is uh, inactivity. When you're not active, resting also doesn't mean not working. It, it, resting doesn't mean uh, uh, um, it's a rest from work. No, it's a rest in work. It's a rest in work. So ir irrespective of whether you're working at a marriage, working at a relationship, a friendship, working at a business, working at something in God, we need to be in a place resting in that place in work, which leads me to this morning's message, because we, we're going to kind of download this. So uh, years ago, we had a young man that was just coming off some drugs, or he was he had just been on some drugs, and, and uh, so... Uh, they, uh, the youth went uh, to uh, a concert, a, a, a Christian concert downtown, and they were in the van, and they're driving, and he's listening to music, but he's like listening like this, you know. And uh, so one of the young people said, hey, man, what you listening to? He says, yeah, listen, and, and you take it out, and you, they put the thing, you know, the earphones in, and this is what you hear. And, and, and this is the music that, and, and the guy says, whoa, bro. And they said, what's the name of that song? He goes, Inner Peace. <laughs> that was the reaction of the van. They were crying with laughter. They, could, they couldn't even, they could hardly worship when they went to the concert because all they thought of was, hurrah. What's the name of the song, bro? Inner Peace. A lot of people don't know what's inner peace. Amen? And so this morning, um, Romans 14, 17, watch this, says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. It's not, don't eat this, don't drink that, don't chew gum, don't... Uh. It's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. When Jesus, watch, whenever you re hear the word kingdom, it has something to do with the king. Amen. There is no kingdom without the king. So when the king is on the throne and is resident in your life, in the house, righteousness, which we hear a lot about at City Bible Church, and now we're hearing about peace, which is what we're hearing about now. We're, we're moving into a place of peace. Why? Because, folks, you will not hear God when you're hearing, rah, 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 
Now, I'm not against rock music, but man, if, if it's taking you out of your peace, you need to leave it alone. Amen. Righteousness, the kingdom of God is righteousness. Now, that doesn't mean we must all go for the gators, you know. Amen. So nothing against the gators, but it's just not my kind of music, you know. I, when I got saved, man, I got saved with like Led Zeppelin, Uriah Heap, Deep Purple. Ah, and, and, and so I, I said to somebody, I said, man, do you have any good Christian music? And they showed me Jimmy Swaggart. Now, Jimmy Swaggart, remember, for us that are mature, that was good music. You know, it was okay. But for someone who's looking for something a little more like what I came out of, it was like, oh, man, these people need help with their music. So thank God the Lord has restored some instruments and some music. From there, we went to the choruses. You remember the choruses? We went into the choruses, and from the choruses, we went into some worship. And so God has been restoring and bringing us some good Christian music. Amen. So the kingdom of God is not about do's and don'ts. It's not about uh, uh, you're not allowed to do this and you, you're allowed to do that. It's about righteousness, which we talk about, right standing with God, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So we're going to talk about peace today. Fruit, uh, uh, the fruit of the Spirit is peace. If you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, you're supposed to be at peace. But you know what? Sometimes I look at Christians in churches and we're the most unpeaceful people around. We're stressed. We're fearful. We are anxious. We, the Christians just walk around like this, you know. They just, there's no peace in people's lives. They just seem to be void of peace. They don't know what it means to have peace. Peace is not something that's part of many Christians' lives. And God is saying, listen, the fruit of the Spirit, the Spirit that's in you is peace. Peace. You can hear God's voice clearly when you're at peace. Remember, there was a storm raging. Does that mean your world has to be perfect? No. The storm is raging around you like it was with Jesus, but he was at peace. At the bottom of the boat, resting, calm, and knowing that God's got this. And so we're beginning to introduce this, this understanding of peace. So I heard about an a story about an Airbus 380 that's way going across the Atlantic and, it, and uh, 500 miles an hour, 30,000 feet up in the air. Suddenly, two F-16s show up on the left and the right. The pilot of the fighter slows down, flies alongside the Airbus, greets the pilot and the passengers, uh, the passenger plane by radio. Airbus, boring flight, isn't it? Now have a look here. So the F-16 pilot throws his, his jet into a, 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 a negative G-force turn, flips it around, goes right down a couple of hundred feet up, just pulls it back up, spins up in the air, cuts the engines, powers them back up. And I mean, he's going crazy. And, then, and, and, and he pulls the jet up and he comes next to him and says, now how about that? Very impressive, isn't it? The jet pilot watches the Airbus. Uh, 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 I mean, uh, um, uh, so he accelerates. He broke, breaks the sound barrier, rises rapidly to heights that's unbelievable. Um, takes a breathtaking dive. He loops back to the Airbus bus and asks, "How was that?" So the Airbus pilot answers, "Very impressive." But watch this. So the pilots are watching, and nothing happens. It continues to fly straight at the same speed. After 15 minutes, the Airbus pilots radios, well, how was that? Confused, the jet pilot asks, what did you do? The Airbus pilot laughs and says, well, I got up, I stretched my legs, I walked to the back of the plane, Used the washroom, got a cup of coffee, I got a nice a bagel, some chocolate fudge, and, and I relaxed. I came back, and here we are. Sometimes people have to 
prove themselves and there's a, no peace going on inside of them. And yet the air force, uh, the, the, the pilot inside, I don't know if you know this, but most pilots that fly those Boeing jets, most of them were fighter pilots. I don't know if you know this. This is how it is. They were Air Force or Navy fighter pilots. So for him, hey man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be at peace. I'm not going to stress myself out. Because let me tell you, when you're pulling negative Gs, I don't know if you've ever gone. I mean, I used to race. And when you're going sideways and you're drifting and you're pulling those Gs, sometimes your face kind of pulls and, and you're stressing. Am I going to make it? And you're powering your way through. You're trying to push through that bend to come out the other side. And, you, and you're powering and you don't want to overpower. You don't, you don't want to oversteer. You don't want to understeer. Otherwise, the car will spin. You don't want to hit anything. Otherwise, the car can flip. And, and you are stressed. And when you come out the other side, whoa, it's great. Yes, the adrenaline's pumping. Yes, it's exciting. But there's no peace. Amen. Amen. And sometimes in life, we forget that peace is actually a, not a bad thing. Some people don't know how to live at peace. Every family has at least one of those people. I hope it's no one sitting here. That doesn't, they're a battle axe. They are there to cause strife, to cause a war, to cause an issue. If there's no issue, they become the issue. They create an issue. They, they find something that does, that's not present, and they, 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 they center on that. They find something that isn't right, and they center on that. There's, there's, just, some, there's just something. They're going to find a reason to create a problem. Why? And we as God's people, God has called us to rest and to peace. Romans 14 verse 19 says, Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace. Say with me, from today, I'm following after things that make for peace. Why do we always have to be uh, 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 anti? Why do we always have to be that, that which flows against? You know what, folks, right now, for the last month or two, you've been getting the pastor, very pastoral messages. And you're going to find in the next month or two, we're going to kind of start switching. You're going to see more the apostolic and the evangelist because we're going to start moving into a couple of months of talking about healing and restoration and, 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 and seeing the power of God to heal. We're moving into months of healing. We're going to, on Wednesday nights, we, we've got some, and I'm not always the one that, that's going to be teaching. We have other people that teach across the country, but they, this is their church. They're going to be teaching on healing on a Wednesday night before Bible study. So an hour before Bible study, people are going to come and learn to receive healing, to get healed, and learn. We're going to also be learning how to minister healing, how to lay hands on the sick. I'm going to be teaching between me and other people. We're going to be teaching on these subjects so that we can walk in His healing anointing. Amen. So you'll find the evangelist and the apostle uh, flow strongly in those things. And so we're going to be doing that. But now here it says, Follow after the things. This is very pastoral because it's talking about you, what's going on inside of you. Follow after the things that make for peace. Where you can, where, where you can edify one another. You know what? Do's and don'ts for meat destroys the work of God. You know all this, you can eat. No, you can't eat. Don't eat with us. Don't eat with us. That can destroy the work of God, the Bible says. All things indeed are pure. But it's evil for the man who uh, eats with offense. We talked about offense. If you eat with offense, which is the Greek word skandalon, and it means that which causes you to stumble. If something causes you to stumble, don't touch it. Whether it's something you drink, whether it's something you eat, don't eat it if it causes you to stumble. Don't drink it. Leave it alone. Don't touch it. Amen? A lot of people say, well, are Christians allowed to drink this? Are they allowed to eat that? If it causes you or someone around you to stumble, why are you doing it? it may, even the Bible says. So listen, it goes on and it says, um, go right to the bottom of verse 23. Um, and, it say, and it ends off and it says, for whatever is not of faith is sin. Whatever is not of faith. 
whether it's something you're eating, you're drinking, you're doing, your choices, decisions you're making, whatever, you, whatever is not of faith is sin. Remember, rest is not inactivity. Rest is not rest from work. It's rest in work. It says, uh, the NIV says, let us therefore make every effort, say with me, every effort, to do what leads to peace. Make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. Romans 16, 17 says, I urge you, brothers and sisters, to watch out for those who cause divisions and puts offenses, scandal on, in front of you, in your way. That is contrary to the teaching you have learned. If something is causing you to stumble, whether somebody puts legalism, laws, rules, and, and or whether they're putting, listen, uh, uh, God forgives you, you can do whatever you want. That's just as much sin, as much as legalism is sin, a misunderstanding of God's grace is sin. Amen? Where we think we can do what we like because God, God's forgiven us. It says, for such people, verse um, 18, are not serving the, our Lord Christ, but but they serving their own appetites. By smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the minds of naive people. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 3 says, We put no stumbling block in anyone's path. We don't put any scandal on in anyone's path so that our ministry will not be discredited. Rather, as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way. Why am I telling you all this? Because you know what? As Christians, listen. You are at a certain place of maturity. Somebody else may be here, may be here. They may be here in some areas. They may be here in some areas. It's not for you to be condemning someone who's, you've overcome this. So you looking down and you, look, what, what, look at these Christians. Look what they, and, and we're attacking them. Yet maybe they overcame and they're walking in love in areas that you dream of that you wish you had. Maybe they have overcome anger and bitterness and unforgiveness. So, folks, it's not for us to be condemning, but to be encouraging and praying for one another. Stay in a place of peace. Don't let people disrupt your peace. We allow people to disrupt our peace. I remember once I was very young in the Lord. In fact, I was uh, maybe a year old in the Lord and I've told the story many times before. I, I, I used to, before I went into the military, it was a quick uh, job just so to keep me busy till I could go in to the Air Force where I served in South Africa. And um, I, I went, I, I used to uh, go to insurance companies to sell them my company's services. And so I had the competition's price list. I knew I knew we beat his prices. I knew we, we did a better job. I knew we could give better service. So I went to go and I had to see the claims manager. So I go, I ask for the claims manager, the little girly at the, at the, at the, at the uh, uh, reception desk. She says, oh, no problem. This guy in, invites me in. I go, I sit down. I say, listen, I'm here from such and such a company. I'm here to try and win your business. I know that you're doing your uh, business through a company called Radio Manny. I said, I have their price list. I know what prices they're giving you. I can better their price list, firstly. And secondly, I can give you better service. Will you at least try us out? Man, all of a sudden, this guy freaks out. He calls me every name under the sun. He is freaking out. He's screaming. He's shouting. He's cussing me out. And then he says, get out! And I'm like, and I, I, I leave. And I'm standing outside, and you know, you know when you go out, and the little girl is like, when I walk out, she's like this. She won't even look. She, you can see she's like horrified. She's terrified he's going to do the same to her. So I go, and I, I, I go outside, and I'm thinking, and I say, Lord, what just happened? And I'm like, and I felt horrible because, uh, uh, remember, I wasn't delivered yet. And I'm thinking, this guy's been insulting. He shouted at me, called me names. Cussed me out, cussed out my whole heritage and everything. <laughs> Should I have beaten him up? Well, I don't know. I wasn't sure. Give him fivefold ministry. What do you do? I, I'm still young in the Lord. And the Lord just said to me, be at peace. 
the Lord just, right outside of this company, the Lord just said, just receive my peace. And I received his peace, got on my bicycle, went to the next place. Because what I'd do is I'd take my car into, into town with a bicycle in the back. Because think of New York, there's just no parking. So I'd park my car near, near my dad's factory and I'd use a bicycle to go and visit all my companies. Come back with a bicycle, put it in the, in the back, in the trunk and go home. And so got on the bicycle, went to the other companies, and the enemy tried to disrupt my day, tried to disrupt uh, uh, that day and the next day with, with what was going on. So the next night, I'm busy worshiping the Lord, and the Lord says to me, I want you to go back to that company. And I'm thinking, no, that's not the Lord. The Lord says, I want you to go back to that company. I want to give you that business. Because I knew it was like one of the biggest companies we could have gotten. I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to obey. How many of you know all we got to do is obey? When you're in a place of peace, God can speak to you. And, you all, and then you will obey. So, I, uh, um, so the next day, which was a couple, two, three days later, I show up to the horror of the little girl, the little receptionist. She's like... And she says, can I help you? I said, yes, please. Um, I'd like to see the claims manager. She said, really? I said, yeah. She went, okay. <laughs> so I could see she's like, this guy's a sucker for punishment. He's nuts. What is wrong with this guy? How many of you know when you're in a place of peace and you're obeying the Lord, you just got to go with that? So um, she, she, she calls him and says, listen, there's somebody here to see you. He comes out, he says, hi, can I help you? I said, yes, I'd like to see you, please. Welcome, welcome. He grabs my hand. Now, this is the same guy, this is a, a couple of days ago. He literally, almost physically, pushed me and threw me out of, the, of, of, of his building, right? Because think of high-rise buildings like New York, it's like that, in, in Johannesburg. And so, um, uh, he, we, he, he says, would you like some tea? And I'm thinking, okay, setting me up. That's what, no, that's what one of the thoughts that go through my mind. But I know that I'm obeying the Lord. So you, I'm not being, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to say, I handled this. <laughs> How many of you know that sometimes fear is knocking on your door in a big way? When you're obeying the Lord, it's not like fear is not there present knocking on your door, trying to take control of, the, of you or the situation. And, uh. I say, yeah, sure. Uh, how would you like your tea? I, you know, I told him a uh, you know, couple of sugars, put some milk in it, and we're good. And uh, he says, uh, okay, and would, would you like a water? Uh, no, I, I'm fine, thank you. So I go inside, and I'm thinking, does this guy remember me? It was so, he was so different. It was like Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. It's like, it's like two different people, but it's the same body, it's the same face, same dude. So he says, what can I help you with? And now I'm confused. I'm like, I said, like I said to you a couple of days ago, <laughs> I'm from such and such a company. And what we do is when somebody's uh, radio and tape, those days, remember it was radio and tape before CDs came in. When somebody's radio and tape gets stolen, instead of you giving them a check, uh, send them to us. And we give you an extra special price with it all. And we reinstall it so that there's no fraud. We, uh, you eliminate fraud as far as being an, an insurance company. You get a lower price and you get great service. And so I know that my prices are better than uh, a Radio Manny's, which is who was doing his, his business. And I know we can um, give you good business. And before I could even go in to try and close the deal, he says to me, I'll send you the first uh, customer tomorrow. I went, so I'm thinking, drink your tea and get out now while the going is good. So I drink my tea. How many of you know when you, you uh, how many of you have eaten now and you chew later? It's one of those, you drink it and irrespective of how hot it is, you'll just pray for healing outside. And it, so thank you so much. Anything else, listen, let me know if there's anything else that I can help you with. If he, anything else he can help me with. I said, no, that's good. I said, 
I'll come to you next week and you can tell me what the customer service was like. Well, he sent me a few people. Following week, I go and see him. He says, man, I'm giving you all my business. And he gave me all the business. My boss was freaking out. He was like, how did you do it? I've been waiting years to try and get into those companies. Yeah, you are bringing. He says, I don't know what to do. They've got so much. He had to hire people, open up space for all the cars that were being, that were being sent. Keep your peace. Don't be rattled by someone. And then the Lord taught me this. You don't know what happened with him at home with his wife. Or maybe a health issue or a family issue. Something that disrupted him. He, he's not walking with the Lord. But you keep your peace. Don't let your peace be rattled. Amen? When we operate out of a place of peace, it's amazing uh, what, what God does. And um, listen to what happens. This is my prayer, Philippians 1.9, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern. See, when you're in a place and you're walking in love, you have the peace of God, so that you can discern what is best. You cannot discern what is best when, you're, when you've lost your peace. And may, and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. You know, when we lose our peace, sometimes, you know, to put it in southern terms, we lose our Jesus. You shouldn't lose your Jesus, folks. Jesus is there. He's on the throne. Don't throw him out. It's not, it's not okay, he's Lord. No, he's not. He's Lord. No, he's not. He's Lord. No, he's not. He's Lord. He's Lord. He's Lord. That's it. Stay in that place of peace. Don't let people, what they do, what they say, how, uh, uh, how they live their life, what, don't let that rattle you. You never see Jesus freaking out and stressed. Nowhere does, does it say in the Bible that God calls for a valium because of what mankind is doing. God does not lose his peace because the Satanists are doing what they're doing. Did you know Jesus doesn't lose his peace? God does not. So, oh, I've got a headache. Bring me, bring me the whole bottle of the leaves, never mind uh, leaves, yeah, or, or whatever, you know. Uh, ibuprofen or whatever. Uh, God, the, the Lord lives in a place of peace. That's why he's the great shepherd who leads us beside still waters into green pastures. When you're being led by the, by the shepherd, you're being led into a place of peace, irrespective of what's going on around you or in your world or in your life. Don't lose your peace. Stay in that place of rest. Keep the peace. The Bible says we'll be led forth with peace. You shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. You lose the leading of the Lord when you lose your peace. You don't know what to do. You don't know where to go. You don't know, you, there's confusion. You'll just be going round and round. You'll be freaking out. Rah! Like, like, that, like that music. Rah, 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 rah. You know? Amen? You know? If, if, if you don't know what I'm, I'm talking about, like head banging music, uh, you know, that kind of, anyway. If you don't know what, that, what I'm saying, don't worry about it. All right, so James chapter 4 and verse 7 says, Submit yourselves therefore unto God. What do you do when, when your peace is being disrupted? When something is coming to try and steal that peace from you? Submit yourself unto God, which is his word. Then the Bible says, Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Take authority over that thing. Recognize it for what it is. So I resist that thought. I resist that attack. I resist that insult. I resist those words that were spoken over me. If somebody curses you, says things about you or to you that aren't the Lord. I had to do this all the time because in my culture, it's a common thing for people to be cursing you. If, you know, especially parents. They, they're doing it to manipulate you to do what, it's, uh, uh, it's true. It's, it's the culture. M may, uh, may you go blind. W may you, when you get old, may your children do 10 times worse to you. I mean, they, cur they curse you horribly. 
And when I came into this truth, every time I would hear, because remember, they are unsaved. I'm not going to fight them. I'm just going to say, Lord, I cancel out those words in Jesus' name. I condemn every word, every curse that's been spoken over my life. I condemn it to the pit of hell in Jesus' name. I don't receive that. I thank you, Father, that I walk in your peace and I live in your peace. I thank you that my children are, are good kids. My children love me. They adore me. They honor me. Amen? I, I would say the opposite of what this person is cursing me with. I would, because you've got to release it. Release God's word in place of that curse that you just resisted and condemned. This is your heritage. To condemn that which the enemy is trying to put on you, bind you, bind to you, bind to your life. Amen? Is this a good word or what? Amen. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 7 says, casting all your care upon him. Say with me, casting all my care upon him. You know what, folks? The enemy comes. You don't have money to pay this. How are you going to pay this? How are you going to do that? How are you going to fix this? Look what's come against you. Look at this huge situation that's just happened. Casting all, 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 all means? Why? That's what all means. As a great pastor once said, all means all because that's what all means. Casting all your care upon him because he cares for you. Be sober. Don't stop reading. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, your enemy, the devil, the deceiver, the accuser, as a roaring lion is making big noise. And you're hearing the big noise. Sometimes all we hear is the noise the roaring lion is making. The enemy roaring lion, not the Jesus roaring lion. Amen? Remember, it doesn't say he is a roaring lion. He goes as a roaring lion. Nowhere in the Bible does it say he's a roaring lion. As a roaring lion. I know some of you went, whoa, that's a cool revelation. You'll never find where the devil's called the devil, uh, 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 a roaring lion. It says he goes around as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Those words that would rob you of your peace, rob you of your quality of life, rob you of, of, of your confidence, rob you of your security, rob you of... Of, of your those words that are lying to you about your health, lying to you about the future, your future. Those words are the words that the roaring lion is wanting you to adopt, receive, ponder on, get stressed out, become anxious, get all uptight, be, get down and get depressed and end up all bound and inactive disabled spiritually as a father, as a mother, as a son, as a daughter, as a human, as a brother, as a sister, as a worker in society. I've known people that cannot, couldn't come out the bedroom. I prayed for a lady once, she couldn't come out of the bedroom. She was so bound because of all the abuses of her past. I counseled her with her mother, and she couldn't leave the, the bedroom. It's to the point where, uh, I won't get into it, but it, it, it was horrific. But the power of God within eight months set her free. Set her free, where she became functional. She came out of the room. The kids, her kids were freaked out. Mom, what you doing here? We're talking about a a mom, a young mom who was actually a granny. Her kids were in their 20s. They, they had kids. The kids had, the little kids had never seen their grandma out of their room, out of her room. That smelt like a toilet. So work it out. I don't want to get into details. When I say she never came out the room, she never came out the room. But when the power of God sets someone free, 
when the power of Jesus brings peace because there was anger, there was hopelessness, there was a feeling, feelings of fear and no control because of all the abuses of the past. Past boyfriends of the mothers, husbands of the mothers, people that were around, cousins, brothers, it just goes on and on. You have no idea what we've counseled. But once God brought his peace through forgiveness, through breaking the power of the enemy off of her life, where she received peace, she was attending church. She smelled good. They bought a new mattress and the bedroom started to smell like a normal bedroom. She was able to move around the house, drive around and function. People in the church wouldn't have known the difference. Because the power of Jesus set her free, filled her heart with peace. Her anger wasn't just against these men, it was even against the mom. The mom who knew what was going on but did nothing to protect her as a little girl. Folks, why am I telling you that? To expose someone? I didn't give you the name so you'll never know. No, it's for you to know. That no matter what has happened in our past, I'll say it in American, whatever has happened in your past, God can fill your heart with his peace. No matter what's gone down, no matter how horrific, no matter what sin, what horrific thing has been done or accomplished. We had one lady, the power of God set her free. She was like, 40, 42 years old, and for 22 years, she, she lived in church riddled and bound with guilt. She had no peace because she, at the age of 16, 17, had a baby and she had an abortion. And so she was told she was a murderer. And no matter how much she tried to repent and make right and get forgiveness... Guess what? Her, her not forgiving herself robbed her of her peace. Now I'm not saying that's right or wrong. That's not the issue. Let's stick to the subject. The subject is stuff that we've done that we look back and we go, why did I do that? What was I thinking? And now we're living with the guilt and the condemnation that goes with it. I don't know about you, but that's what sin does. It makes us do things we would, years later you look back, what, what was I thinking? Am I the only one that's got that? Come on. Stretch your hands out and pray for your pastor. Oh, God bless him. Are you serious now? Amen. We've done some, some, sometimes we look back and we go, what was I thinking to have done that? And we lose our peace because we think that God's still angry with us. So if God's angry with me, how can I have peace with God? Romans 5.1 says that we have peace with God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, having been justified by faith. I'm justified by faith. Remember that vision that the Lord gave us about walking on that what looks like glass, but it's actually faith? We stay walking and living and justified by faith. And sometimes we're robbed of that peace because of stuff that went on, stuff that we've been through, and we say, well, he hasn't had this. He hasn't done that. I don't have to. You haven't walked my, in my shoes. I haven't walked in yours. Everybody has their own walk. Either way, God's peace is available to us no matter what's gone on, where we've been, where we've come from, and even where we were yesterday. Does that cheapen God's grace? Not at all. It lifts it up because where sin abounds, God's grace abounds even more. Amen. God's grace is more than just forgiveness. It's also his power that changes our lives. So we want to live right and we do live right. And he empowers us to keep God's peace. Now, when we lose our peace, it's a handle for the enemy to move us, to influence us in certain directions. Be aware of that. The Greek word for the word 
uh, peace is the word Irini. Say Irini. Basically the word Irene. You know the, na the name Irene? That means peace. It's the Greek word Irini. And it means a state of, na of national tranquility. When there's a tranquility. Exemption from rage and havoc of war. You know when we, I, I'm at war with so and so. When you're at peace, you're not at war with anyone. Peace between individuals, as in harmony, accord. You know what I said to one person once who just wanted to stay in a fight with me? I said, you know, I just want to let you know, you're in that boxing ring on your own. I've stepped up a long time ago. You don't have to just because someone is... Step out of the ring, let them punch themselves out. Not, let them knock themselves out in there. Whatever. You don't have to engage. Keep your peace. Amen? It also means the way that leads to peace. You know, sometimes some people don't know how to be at peace, how to live at peace. It's almost like they have to, their way of controlling is through anger, through being uh, uh, um, uh, adverse, being, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Where everyone's going this way, they're going to go this way, that kind of thing. Amen? So I'm going to leave this piece out here. Uh, actually, yeah, yeah, let's leave that, that, that out. All right, Romans 12, 15 says, be of the same mind toward one another, the mind of Christ. It, it says, um, mind, don't mind the things, but condescend to men of a low state, go, go down to everybody's level, be wise. Oh, hold on. L let me read it in the NIV. Best, best. Whenever you struggle with anything in the King James, just read the NIV. It says, Verse 14, bless those who persecute you and bless, uh, bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Don't think you're perfect and you've got it all together all the time. Don't repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Am I reading the Bible or am I quoting Errol? I'm reading the Bible. Live at peace with everyone. As far as it's possible to you, live at peace. Don't, your job is not to antagonize every single person on, on the face of the planet. And it goes... Um, do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to revenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not overcome, do not be overcome by evil. God has called us to live in peace. I'm reading from Romans chapter 15, verse 14 to 21. Do not be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. 1 Corinthians 14, 33 says, God is not a God of disorder. If disorder is bringing, is robbing you of your peace, if your life is not in priority, prioritize your life. If, if you are living from uh, uh, um, crises to crises, from this uh, uh, craziness to that craziness, live according to priorities. Sit down, write down your priorities. When you live according to priorities, you'll find that those crises, when you, you will fit them in According to your priorities, you'll be taking care of the family. You'll be taking care of God's house. You'll be taking care of the, the kids. And as we go, now I can deal with the, the crises because I've taken care of my priorities. 
bring order into your life. 2 Corinthians 13, 11 says, Finally, brothers and sisters, strive for full restoration. Say with me, full, full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. When you don't live in peace, don't expect the God of peace to be with you. Amen? Some people think that Jesus came to preach war. I've heard people say he came to preach the sword. Look what the Bible says. You know, how many of you know something can be a truth, but it's not the truth? You can't make a whole doctrine out of one scripture. Because here it says, he came and preached peace to you who were far away. And peace to those who were near. So we need to be preaching peace. Ephesians 4.3, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit. You know what, folks? One of the biggest destroyers of a revival in a church is that which robs us of our unity. Unity is oneness of mind, oneness of spirit, oneness of purpose. We need to be united. We need to be one body. We need to be one together. We can do this, church. We can be that church that brings revival to Jacksonville. Why are we waiting for the big church down the street? Let's be in unity. Think about this. God's, how many of us seek for God's blessing? Watch this now. God commands His blessing where there's unity. Where there's unity in a home, marriage, business, church, community. Does that mean we're going to agree on everything? No, I can be in unity with you even though you, you believe that there's no, um, there's no rapture. If you believe there's no rapture, okay. If you're right, hey, I'm, I'm ready anyway. If you want to believe Jesus is going to, the, he's going to come before anything happens, pre-trib rapture, he's going to rescue us and we're not going to go through anything. Hey if, it, hey, if it happens, I'll be more happy than you are. But you know what? I'm ready whether we raptured pre, mid, post, or no. I'm ready. I'm not going to lose my peace because we disagree on a minor issue. Now, now, if it's a major issue, like did Jesus down the cross, did he take upon uh, 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 himself our sins? These are major issues. There's no, there's, there's no place for disagreement on that, who Jesus is. Jesus is the Son of God. He's the, uh, the, uh, he, he is God made flesh. If, this, if, if you disagree on that, this isn't your, a good church for you. Amen? We. That, those are majors. We have to agree on the majors. That's what makes this church what it is. But on the minors, things that we, we could all be wrong. Pre, mid, post, no. Who knows? Somebody's right. Who cares? Don't lose your peace. Well, I can't be in a church that uh, doesn't believe in that. And then you go to the next church, and they're doing something else. Stay in your community. Stay in your zone. Stay in that place where God's presence is. Stay in that place where God has called you. Stay in that place where, where, you, where you're being fed, where, you, where you're drinking of the rivers of life. Stay in that place that promotes and brings peace to your heart. That when that preacher stands up on a Sunday morning, whether it's me or whoever, you know they're bringing you the word of the Lord and God is speaking to you. That's how you know you're in the right place. God is speaking to you. You know how many times I hear this? You, Pastor, you read my mail again. And I go, thank you, Jesus. I thank Jesus every time somebody says that to me. Because I know I'm, I'm hearing from Him and I'm doing what He tells me to do. I love it when He wakes me up in the mornings. Oh, we had a great time. Great time this morning. Awesome. 
I'll tell you about another time. Philippians 4 verse 6. I'm going to start closing with this. Be anxious for nothing, but in all things, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God. Say with me, and the peace of God. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. In other words, it doesn't make sense. Will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. Say with me, and the peace of God, which makes no sense to this mind, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. Colossians chapter 1, and I'm going to close with this. Chapter, uh, sorry, uh, Colossians chapter 3 and verse 15. Colossians 3 and verse 15 says, Let the peace of Christ, say with me, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. We're called for God's peace to rule in our hearts. Since as members of one body you were called and be thankful. Say with me, and be thankful. He says be thankful. Just close your eyes, lift your hands. We're talking about living in peace. We're talking about living at rest. Some of you haven't had peace for a while. Stuff happened. It robbed you. Stuff came in. Situations or maybe even going on right now that has the power, the potential, and maybe it has robbed you. It robbed you of your peace. And today you're saying, Pastor Errol, I want God's peace to fill my heart and my life once again. I haven't had peace in my heart because I've I'm carrying this burden of guilt and condemnation. I haven't had peace in my heart because I've had this situation going on in my house for so long. I've got the situation with my kids, with my uh, uh, with my family, with my finances, with my business or uh, with my health. And 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 I I haven't had peace. It's time for you to get your peace back. The thief comes to steal, to kill, to destroy. The thief, the devil, came to steal your peace. Using people, using situations, using the lies of the enemy, using what's been said to us, things that we've accepted, that's been spoken over us. What the enemy... You know, I have to break so many curses over my life. There's a Turkish word, which means hopeless. And it means you'll never, it actually, it means more than just hopeless. It means you'll never achieve anything. Every time I'm, and, and they say it like, like it's nothing. They say it over you like it's, like they're talking about bubble gum. It's like, it, it means nothing. But it's actually a curse. I had to break all that off of my life. Sometimes culturally, whether it happens culturally or whether we, we had a, that father or that mother or that sibling, you're useless. You'll never amount to anything. I'm sure we've all heard this somehow. And we allow the enemy to actually ordain our future. And so today, we're going to break some curses. Are you ready? When you break it off you, it automatically breaks off your kids, especially if your kids are under your roof. Because, and you're not passing down all that trash that was passed down to us, onto our kids. Amen? Let's say with me, Father, today, I break every curse 
every lie, every deception, every negative thing that was spoken over my life before today by anybody and everybody. Firstly, I forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. I forgive them and release them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, today, I break every curse, every lie, every spirit that attached itself onto me, that has influenced my future and my present in any way. Loose your hold and go from me right now. In Jesus' name, I dismantle, disable, cancel out, neutralize, and nullify every negative word that's been spoken over me, my family, my home. If you're single, say my singleness. If you're married, say my marriage. In the name of Jesus, over my children, over my parents, over my grandchildren, I break this curse. I sever it right now. And Lord, I receive for myself and my children, I receive and grandchildren your peace, the ability, the understanding, the knowledge, the truth of walking in your peace. Father, I thank you today for your peace that guards my heart and my mind. All anxiety and fear goes. All anxiety and fear goes right now. And Lord, I receive your peace into my mind and my heart. Flood me with your peace. Saturate me with your peace. Holy Spirit, help me to recognize when the enemy would come in to rob me and to steal this peace that I've received right now. In Jesus' name. Lord, today, I repent for not being an instrument of peace. And Lord, today, I choose to come under your command, authority, to be your weapon to bring peace. Love in Jesus' name. To bring your kingdom to others. I receive your peace for my own life and I let your peace flow through me from now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. While every head is bowed and every eye is closed, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, or maybe you once knew Him, but you backslid, stuff happened, you stepped away from God, you grew cold in heart, but today you're saying, Pastor Errol, I want to give my life, I want to rededicate my life to the Lord Jesus. Right where you are, just raise your hand. We'll say, God bless you. Is there anybody here this morning? I want to give my life, I want to rededicate my life to the Lord Jesus. Right where you are, just raise your hand. Don't be shy. Jesus raised two hands for you so that those nails could be pushed through them. Those of you watching online, if you are receiving Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, pray this prayer with me. Let's all pray this prayer out aloud for the folks that are watching online that maybe aren't where they should be with the Lord. They've lost their peace. Sometimes you lose your peace when you step out of that place where the Lord had you. There are some of you that need to be in this house, in this church. Some of you used to be here. Some of you need to be here. I'm 
I'm calling you a special invitation to come. Come and get locked into what God is doing for you, and then He's going to do it through you. So pray this prayer with me. Father, this morning, I open the door of my heart. I repent of my sins. Lord, forgive me for rebelling, turning against you. Living in unbelief. Lord, today I repent. Wash me and cleanse me in the blood of Jesus from all sin, all unrighteousness. Lord, I receive your peace. Come into my heart, Lord. Get on the throne of my heart. And I make you Lord today, King and Savior in Jesus' name. Those of you watching online, God bless you. We'll see you again next week. I know the Lord has touched you. Keep your peace no matter what happens. Those of us that are here today, listen nicely.